In part B of the free fall notes, we want to take a look at the motion of an object that's tossed up into the air and then caught at the same height that it was released at. Because it's tossed up in the air, we're going to assume no air resistance. We have a free fall situation and the acceleration for an object in free fall is negative 9.8 meters per second per second which means that the velocity changes by negative 9.8 meters per second every second. For the notes, just for this example, I'm going to work with some specific numbers so you can really see what it means for the velocity to change by this amount every second. And I'm going to conveniently pick the numbers so that after three seconds, the object will be at its highest point. So that means I'm going to start it with a velocity of 29.4 meters per second and it's moving upward, so that's a positive velocity. And I'm gonna draw my motion map. So we know it's slowing down on the way up. Velocity instantaneously zero at the highest point, and then speeding up on the way down. And I've offset the dots for the way down just so that my arrows are not on top of the other arrows. And let's just talk about what would the velocity be at each second. If this is t equals 0, then this is t equals 1, t equals 2, t equals 3 seconds, t equals 4 seconds, 5, and 6. So at 0, we have a velocity of 29.4 meters per second. After 1 second, the velocity will have changed by negative 9.8 meters per second. So 29.4 meters per second with a change of negative 9.8 would give us a new velocity of 19.6 meters per second. Still positive and it's still moving upward. After another second it's going to have decreased by another 9.8 meters per second. So it's a change of negative 9.8. 19.6 meters per second with a change of negative 9.8 is a new velocity of 9.8 meters per second. After another second, it's going to change by another negative 9.8. So 9.8 meters per second plus a change of negative 9.8 gives us the velocity of zero at the highest point. So now you can see why I started with 29.4 meters per second. Then on the way down, in the next second, from three to four seconds, we have another change of negative 9.8. Well, if you start at zero, and you change it by negative 9.8 meters per second, that is the velocity. So negative 9.8 meters per second at four seconds. After another second, it's gonna change by another negative 9.8 meters per second. So now the velocity is negative 19.6. And after another second, I'm gonna change by a neg another negative 9.8 meters per second. And we have negative 29.4 meters per second. So one thing I want you to notice is the symmetry that at each position on the way up and on the way down we have symmetric velocities, positive for the one on the way up and negative for the one on the way down. So if you know the velocity that something is thrown at and it's being caught at the same height, you automatically know what this velocity is, just the negative of this velocity. Okay, so hopefully you can see too what it means for there to be a constant acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second every second. That every second, the velocity changed by the same amount. It changed by negative 9.8 meters per second. Let's talk about the direction of the change in velocity. To get from this velocity vector to this one, you would need to add a downward arrow. So the change in velocity is downward. And the same thing is true here. To get from this one to this one, you would need a downward change in velocity. And that tells us the direction of the acceleration. Acceleration is in the same direction as the change in velocity. So we have a negative acceleration when it's slowing down in the positive direction. And we have a negative acceleration when it is speeding up in the negative direction. Let's take a look at the force on the object. After it's released, the only force acting on it is the force of gravity. Because force of gravity depends on the planet you're on 
and the mass of the object, and neither one of those is changing, this force is constant at every moment of the motion. So I'm trying to draw these the same length. These are all the same constant force. And we also want to notice that this is an unbalanced force, which corresponds to having motion of constant acceleration. A ball is tossed upward with an initial speed of 4 meters per second. Assume air resistance is negligible. So right away, we want to think about what is the motion model and what is the force model that applies. This is going to be constant acceleration because it's free fall and the force is unbalanced. The next step is always to draw a picture, just a sketch of the physical situation. So the ball is tossed upward and it doesn't actually say this here, but he's going to catch it at the same height. So it goes up and comes down. And it's always a good idea, too, to sketch a motion map. That was not a good example of a motion map. But try to sketch that here it has the faster velocity so that you're really thinking about what's happening. You need to set up a coordinate system. So I'm putting my y equals 0 at the initial position and show your positive and negative directions. Now we're going to sketch our graphs. My object is starting at y equals 0, and it's going to end at y equals 0 when it gets caught. But it's going to start out with a very high positive velocity, so very steep positive slope. Then it's slowing down, so not so steep, and then 0. So it's going to look like this, reaching a horizontal tangent at the highest point, halfway between the total time. And this should look symmetric on both halves. Then for the velocity, we start out with a very high positive velocity, still positive but not so large, and then at the highest point zero. And then on the way down, negative values that are becoming more negative. So we should have a straight line for the velocity time graph. The slope is the acceleration negative 9.8 meters per second per second. And then this area would be the delta y for the first half of the motion. So that would actually be the maximum height. The acceleration time graph will be a horizontal line at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And now let's go ahead and find two things. We're going to find the time to the maximum height and also going to find what is the maximum height above the release point. So I would suggest you pause the video and try to solve those yourself using the graphs and then check back with the video. Although I'm realizing before you do that, we should also annotate the graph with this initial velocity. And because of the symmetry, we know that the velocity just before it's caught is also, the speed is also 4, so that velocity is negative 4. To calculate things using the graphs, we really have two approaches. We can work with the slope, and we can work with the area. And sometimes you might not be clear what you can find with each one until you write those equations down, which is perfectly fine. Um, if I think it through ahead of time, I can see that if I try to use the area, that would involve delta y, it would involve the base of the triangle, which is delta t, and I don't know that, and it would involve the height of the triangle, which I do know. So I'd have two unknowns. So that will not work for finding this. Um, unless I set up two equations. But let's see what I can do with the slope. So slope is the acceleration, which is the change in velocity over the change in time. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The change in velocity is negative 4, because it went from 4 
to zero. You can also see that if you do V final minus V initial, final velocity is zero. Anytime you're finding a change, it's the final value minus the initial value. Okay, and calculating that, so multiply both sides by delta t, we get, and then dividing both sides by negative 9.8, you will get 0.41 seconds. Okay, so that's the time to get to the maximum height. By symmetry, we know then the time for the whole motion must be 0.82 seconds. What is the maximum height? Let's try the area and see what we can find. Area is one half base times height. The area will be the displacement during that time interval that we're looking at. The base is the delta t, which we just found, 0.41 seconds. And the height is the velocity, 4.0 meters per second. And calculating that, we get 0.82 meters. Okay, so on this graph, we know this must be 0.82 meters, which is the displacement in the first half of the time.